Church.com. I hope your uh, week's been going well. We've got to the point where Moses has been taken away from his mother. I can't imagine how hard it was. It says that he was a uh, fine child. He was a beautiful little kid. And for three months she hit him. How tough it must have been. I know many of us have gone through hard times, hard things. And I can't imagine much more than a parent saying, my child was stolen from me. And with the possibility of not only the child being taken from a good parent, but even killed, murdered. And how terrifying that must be to a parent. I can't think of very many things in life that would be scarier than that. Well, Moses' mom, Jochebed, goes exactly through that. And we're going to see what happens and how God takes care of her. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was a lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see so clearly. Hallelujah, grace like a rain falls down. Scripture passage is Exodus 2, verses 1 through 9. 
Now a man from the house of Levi went and took as his wife a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she took for him a basket made of bulrushes and daubed it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds by the river bank. And his sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, while the, her young women walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her servant woman, and she took it. When she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby was crying. She took pity on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the girl went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. Yesterday we talked about Miriam and how she was watching this entire thing happen. And compared to the baby drowning or having a crock eat it, uh, it had to seem like a wonderful thing to have a person go take the child out of the water. On the other hand, this was the enemies that were drowning all the male baby Israelites anyways. So she had to think, oh no, what's going to happen? And she's again, she's so scared, she's sitting there. The mother's not even around. And, and, and here's the big sister, and the baby's so beautiful, and it's crying. And the princess takes pity on it. She knows it's one of the Hebrew children. They look different. It's obvious that he's a Hebrew, not one of the Egyptians. But she takes pity on that little boy. And it's amazing what God does. That big sister that was standing around walks up. What courage it must have taken of Miriam to walk up to the princess. I mean, the Jews are hated. They're killing the Jewish people. And this little girl has the courage to walk up to the princess and play this whole thing. She goes, oh, well, what are you going to do? She could tell she's going to keep the baby. And she goes, do you want me to find a woman to nurse the child for you? There's no way the princess is thinking this is the boy's big sister. And where he's going to go is right back to his own home. You know, I titled this message, Mama Gets Her Baby. You know, she gets the baby right back in her own life. Not only does she get the baby, for three months she hid the baby. Could you imagine how scary it was to the whole family? They could have easily been killed for disobeying. Not just the baby, the whole family could have been killed for disobeying the king. They were terrified for three months. Anyone would have been. And then it gets to the point where they can no longer hold it. And they can no longer keep Moses hidden because he's just getting too big. His lungs are too strong. He's getting too loud when he cries. What are they going to do? Even maybe one of their own Hebrew people would have turned him in out of jealousy. And in faith, they just put him out on the river and they say, God, he's yours. You do what you can do. Please keep him safe. And what happens? He ends up taken by the Pharaoh's daughter. And the princess is approached by his own sister. And she says, I know somewhere. Moses ends up back in his own home with his own mother. And not only is, is he there, he's safe. They get to spend time with him every day safely. And she's paid to watch her own child. What a joy. See, that's what God can do. You say, I don't know what's going on in my life. You know, the Bible says, cast your bread upon many waters, and it will return to you. They cast the most important thing they had upon the water. Their own son. And they said, God is yours. You've got to take care of him, because we can't do this anymore. We keep him one more day, and they're just going to kill our whole family, including him. God, you've got to do something here. And God does exactly what we know God to do. He rewards their faith. The baby ends right back up in his own home. And they're paid to take care of the baby they were supposed to kill. Isn't God good? Earlier in the week we sang, Ain't God good to give us so many blessings? Undeserving. That's what we are. 
We ought to thank Him, love and praise Him. You know, that's it. God is that good. He loves us. He does wonderful things for us. Things that we could never even hope or imagine God does. I don't know what Miriam was hoping for, but it could have never been this. But boy, when the opportunity came, she jumped all over it. And the baby's right back with his mom, right back in his own family. God loves you. You can say this will never work out. I just got to take care of this on my own. Don't. Just hand it over to God. You've done all you can, friend. There's not another thing you can do, and you know there's not another thing you can do. Don't try to manipulate the situation. Don't run from the situation. Just hand it over to God and say, God, it's yours. Do what you want. You'll be amazed at how that's exactly what you needed to do the whole time. God will take care of it, and you'll be blessed through it. Because he knows how to reward those who are faithful to him. Weak and wounded sinner, lost and left to die. Oh, raise your head for love is passing by. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. Now your burden's lifted and carried far away And precious blood has washed away the stain So sing to Jesus, sing to Jesus, sing to Jesus Like a newborn baby, don't be afraid to crawl. And remember when you walk, sometimes we fall. So fall on Jesus, fall on Jesus, fall on Jesus. Sometimes the way is lonely and steep and filled with pain. So if your sky is dark and pours the rain, then cry to Jesus. Cry to Jesus. Cry to Jesus. Spills over and music fills the night. And when you can't contain your joy inside, then dance for Jesus. Dance for Jesus. Dance for Jesus. And Final heartbeat, kiss the world goodbye, and go in peace and laugh on glory's side, and fly to Jesus.